it's super awkward I'm super nervous it's my first video but let's do it okay hi I'm here with some books today's video is gonna be about uh, my reading plans for the month of April and I know that it's already 5th of April and I barely touched any of these books but it's still a plan over the last several months uh, I put aside quite a few books that I was reading it was some books for the book clubs or read-alongs and some other books got priority and they just piled up and most of them are paperbacks that I'm only on my shelves. One of the biggest goals for 2024 for me was to actually decrease the amount of paperbacks in the house. <laughs> I thought it would be a good match for April plans to read some great stories that I actually enjoyed but for some reason didn't finish and free up some space on the shelves. The first book that I'm gonna talk about today is Till by Daniel Kellman, which was translated from German by Ross Benjamin. Uh, it's a historical novel that tells us reimagined legend of Till Ullenspiegel, who is the character, the trickster from a German folklore. To be honest, I'm not familiar with the original story, um, so I can compare it directly, but I've read almost a half of this book before I dropped it. Um, and you can see that there's quite a few stickers here, which I guess meant something, which I don't remember now, but I'll figure it out. I will try to maybe reread some bits and see how it goes. So that's the first book. So the second book um, is Paperboy by Vincent Walter. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Uh, this book tells a story of an 11 year old boy who is struggling badly with stuttering and one day he takes over his best friend's job as a paper boy for the whole month and he understands that he would have to communicate with stranger, actually strangers because all the neighbors are subscribed to this newspaper thing. Um, yeah the book promises us a beautiful coming-of-age novel and I'm sold. I read I think by now about a third of it so I remember reading um, the initial conversations that he, the boy had with his neighbors and I'll tell you more at the end of the month. Uh, the next book in my April pile is Possession by Anatolia no, it reflects, by Anatolia Bayet uh, this one, I think, was the latest book that I've put aside because it needs attention. There are details, letters, and so many twists that I couldn't follow while I couldn't read actually anything serious for the last month. This book is also a winner of the Booker Prize in 1990, uh, which I think was given to it for a reason. The way this book weaves together I mean, the way the author weaved together different narratives and the way she managed to create a piece of functional history, which is actually all imagined, with so many details, with so many little pieces around, letters, some historical references. It's fascinating. So let me tell you a bit of the plot of, of this book. Uh, there are two main characters, which are both contemporary scholars, uh, Roland Mitchell and Maud Bailey, who, while researching the lives of two fictional Victorian poets, uh, uncover a hitherto unknown relationship between, between those two. I've stopped reading it somewhere at one-fourth, and at the moment there were a lot of... Um, past been revealed via the letters that were found. Um, yeah, thinking of how this book is grabbing attention uh, and pulling you in, I'm actually excited to continue reading it. 
In the autumn last year, I started learning how to dance bachata, and then during the vacation in Barcelona, we went to a bar to see a flamenco show. Uh, both of these things renewed my addiction with dancing, and I think I think I found the next book in the pile by searching books related to dancing. Um, yeah, I don't see the price written here, so it's not from my local bookstore. The book is called Duende, uh, and it's written by James Webster, and the undertitle is A Journey in Search of Flamenco, and as it says on the back cover, it's autobiographical travelogue. But what is Duende? So I searched Wikipedia, and it says that Duende is a Spanish term for heightened state of emotion, expression, and authenticity, often connected with flamenco which doesn't really tell me much. And I guess the author also got confused by the description, and maybe that's why he went on a quest to understand it firsthand. Um, yeah, he dived into the world of flamenco, music of it, and dancing. So he learned, I think he learned playing the guitar and dancing it as well. But yeah, I barely started it, it was like, first 20 pages so we'll see by the way uh if you're also interested in dancing there is a cool documentary that we recently watched on netflix it was called move i think move yes it tells the stories of dancers from around the world a few of them were pretty catchy and i still remember details about them so one of them was about flamenco and another one was about dance hall. Let me know if you know that series or if you watch them. The next book I want to talk about is The Outsider or The Stranger by Albert Camus. Uh, it's translated from French by, at least in my edition, Joseph Laredo. Uh, it's a very short book. There is how much? 100, 120 pages? Uh, and it's been considered a classic of 20th century. And just look at the two opening sentences. Uh, let me read them from the book. Mother died today. Or maybe yesterday, I don't know. And without any other details given, we can imagine so many stories and so many ways it can go. And that's, I find what's so brilliant about it. I'd say it's like a clickbait on the videos because the moment you see the sentences you're hooked to pick up the book and read the story. The novel is set in French Algeria and follows the life of a man who is seems emotionally detached from this world and or irritated. I'm, I wasn't sure when I started reading it. I don't know how, but I managed not to get spoilers about the plot, even though it's so short. And that's why I don't have much to tell you about this book. So in the first few pages, the man goes to visit the funeral of his mother. That's all I know for now. So let's move to the next book. And the next book I want to talk to you about is Cancer Word by Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Yes. <laughs> Uh, it's another book that I eagerly started a few months ago, I think in January, and read about a half, looks like slightly even more, and then got distracted from it. Uh, I remember how I was surprised to see humor in this book. I was expecting suffering, which of course it's there, how people who are at the edge between life and death knowing that there might be no next month, still try to live their lives with whatever they have, doing the things they like, uh, like reading morning newspapers, trying to keep some routine, or some younger characters who think that they'll get back home at some point, so they need to catch up on what they missed there, and they're reading books and trying to learn some new skills. The novel explores themes of suffering, the human 
will to survive, the search for meaning in pain, which is almost every patient there has some pain in their leg and their neck and their back and whatnot. And the moral choices that people face under oppression of the regimes. It's not an easy book, but choosing between this one and the Gulag Archipelago, I've decided that this one might be a bit better start to get to know Solzhenitsyn's works. And the last book in today's pile is Airport by Arthur Haley. I've got an interesting tendency lately, well, two years in a row at least, to read winter books during hot summer days. I don't know if I'm subconsciously trying to cool down or hoping that it will help me to cool down, but two years ago I was reading Winter Journal by Paul Oster on the lake, and the next year I started, uh, so it was last year, I started airport again at the same lake, and now I'm finally ready to get back to it. And now it's also getting warm on the street, so that's perfect time and obviously a mystery to me. I remember the beginning of the book where the brutal winter hazard hit the airport, which caused a lot of delays, a lot of problems on the field and slowly turned the whole airport into a chaos. I like the feeling of um, being in the airport, but not being just a passenger, but also being allowed to go through the doors that usually marked for staff only and see some close-ups of a realistic depiction of aviation industry. That was really cool. That was, that was it. Seven books that I'm planning to finish this month. Some short, some long, some already halfway through. Um, write in the comments below what are you planning to read in April? Or maybe you've read some of the books I've mentioned today, so let me know how you like them. And happy reading! See you in the next videos!